In this video, I'll show you how you can automatically trigger multi-state objects after a certain amount of time. Okay, let's get started here. So this actually comes from a question that I got from James. James asked, have you ever used cue points in Storyline? Great concept. You create a point on the timeline and then you can trigger something to happen from it. Is there anything similar in Captivate? I need to trigger state changes of a character based on time and I can't find anything to allow this. And uh, so I actually have a solution for this. It really isn't working with the timeline, but hopefully this addresses James' concern. And uh, what we'll do is we'll start off by producing a responsive project. It could be a, a standard project as well. So I'll just uh, create a responsive project. Responsive is I'm trying to make it my go-to uh, choice for project types. Uh, just opens up more possibilities for the future. So I have a, a basic uh, responsive project here. I'm just going to switch the theme to blank. And I'm going to get rid of the title here because I just need a white background. So I have uh, have what I need here. Let me just resize this a bit and go for best fit. That's probably the best way to go. And uh, to add a character, in this case, this is what James was looking for, a character who changes um, from one multi-state uh, image to another multi-state image. Uh, based on the timeline. So here's how we're going to do it. The first thing we need to do is we need to create that multi-state character. So I'm going to click on the media drop-down icon and select characters here. And uh, we'll use uh, Angela. She's uh, the default for business, the first one here. And I'm going to insert three different images of her. One where she's showing very little happiness and a little bit more happy and then the third one will be she's actually uh, totally happy ecstatic so we'll start off with the neutral look on her face there and i'm just going to move her aside here and we're going to insert her twin this one here where she's a little more happy and then we'll do the third one where she is ecstatic there we go. Now I don't. I can actually delete them now. My purpose of putting them on the stage was simply to get them to appear in the library, so I can use them later. Um, but I can keep one of them. I can delete these two because it's going to be a multi-state object. So let's just keep a uh, very neutral-faced Angela there. We'll put her in the center of the slide, and we'll go back to the properties panel where we can now add two additional states for Angela. And to do so, I just click on the plus icon next to the object state to add a new object state. And we'll call this one happy. And what we'll do is, of course, the default state for happy is the previous image, which isn't so happy. So I'll just select the new image here. There we go. And I'll click the plus icon again to add a new object state. And we'll call this very happy. And we'll click on OK there and change the image to be the one that's much more happy. There we go. So we have those, uh, we have those three different states in this one object. The object itself is called image one. I can give it a, a new name. We'll just call it Angela. So we're on the properties panel for the page at this point. What we need to do is we need to create an on enter advanced action. So I'm going to select execute advanced actions from the drop down menu. Now I don't have any advanced action scripts for this project yet, but I just simply click on the folder icon next to that to create a new advanced action. So we're going to be brought to the advanced actions window here and we're going to call this uh, emotion for lack of a better word. Um, the very first thing we do is we want to add a delay because this is where the timing question comes into to effect. 
So we want to delay that right now the default state is that kind of neutral look for Angela and we're just going to change that but we don't want to change it too fast we want it to be that way for a second or two so we'll say um, in this case we're looking for delay next action by and you can choose either a variable if you've stored this value somewhere uh, in this case we haven't so we'll just do the literal value of two seconds so after two seconds we'll run the event that's on the next line here and that's going to be change the state of Angela to happy and now we're going to do another delay where we delay next actions again I'll do the same amount two seconds And then we'll change the state of Angela to very happy. And that will do it. So essentially, let's just summarize what we've done here. Basically, we're telling the advanced action to wait for two seconds, change Angela to the happy look, wait another two seconds, and then change Angela to the very happy look. So let's save this as an action close this and make sure that on enter the execute advanced actions is showing a motion and of course we want to make sure that our slide is long enough to accommodate this so let's make sure that it's going to be on screen for let's say uh, 10 seconds and yeah, we could do that from from here as well but we also want to make sure that the object known as uh, Angela is on for the rest of the slide as well or at least 10 seconds so let's give this a try let's just preview this and see how that looks so oh she switched and very ecstatic so there's a way that you can trigger multi-state objects based on a certain amount of time Guys, if you like the videos that I'm producing for you, I encourage you to subscribe to my channel. And if you thought this video was helpful or useful, go ahead and give me a thumbs up.